Next up, we're going to focus on everything related to airflow. And we're going to start just like we did the last section, by doing a walkthrough, seeing what's been done, and what we have to address. Now one big air leak in a basement is usually the bulkhead door that leads outside. These metal doors are nice for keeping out the weather, but they're usually not airtight. So what we're going to do is create an airtight door at the base of the stairs. To build an airtight door, I start with a frame of 2x4s attached to a piece of Zip System exterior sheathing, which has an air barrier built right in. I fit pieces of rigid foam to the interior side of the door frame in two layers with staggered seams. The first layer is two inches thick. The second is one and a half inches thick and butts up to a two by installed on a flat, which provides backing for the door hinges. Once the pieces are cut and fitting, I set and seal them permanently with canned spray foam, sealing everything in place and weight the rigid foam down with scraps of wood while everything sets up. While the foam sets up, I install a site-made door frame, which is assembled from 2x6 pressure-treated lumber and has door stops with conventional kerf-in weather strips to block airflow. The frame is held 2 inches in from the interior face of the basement wall so that it will flush out with the foam that will be applied to the concrete walls later. Then I plumb it, level, shim, and fasten wherever possible. In this case, to the joists above, as well as to the wall on one side, before being locked in with more spray foam. Chances are that the time spent installing the frame will have been long enough for the spray foam on the door to harden up. Well, you can see that some of the spray foam has expanded up past the surface, and we want to clean that up. Now, it sh I should note that this is on purpose. I left these gaps between the rigid foam and the framing a little bit wide so that I could fit my spray foam in there and I put in enough that it would expand up. Now I'm going to come back with this, which is just a notched trowel, and I'm going to use this as kind of a flush cutting saw to trim off the excess. Once trimmed, the door can be set into the opening, attached with heavy duty hinges, and held closed with your choice of latch. Another common leakage point in basements are the windows. Now, these windows open in, and somebody at some point put exterior storms on. We're actually going to flip that concept, and we're going to address that air control layer from the inside. Later, we're going to be putting two inches of foam on the interior face of the basement walls. So to keep the plane of this control layer continuous, we'll also put the storm windows on the inside, set flush to the foam. To assemble the frames, Rip pressure treated lumber to match the thickness of the foam that will be applied to the wall, in this case two inches, and make a pair of mating cuts to rabbit each piece for the window to fit into. One side of the rabbit is overcut slightly, so that after the frame is screwed together, I can cut and fit weather stripping into the saw curve. You don't want air to come in the leaky basement window and go up into the joist bays above. To prevent this, you may need to put in a wider piece of lumber above the window cutout which also provides a good attachment point for the pre-assembled sides and bottom that you just built. This lower part of the storm window frame is best set in a bead of sealant or foam, and tacked into place with one or more concrete screws to keep it tight to the wall until the sealant sets up. Be sure to also seal gaps around the frame, again, either with sealant or foam, to ensure there's no short circuits of airflow undermining all of this careful work. For the storm window, I set a piece of plexiglass into a frame made from curved PVC in order to create a custom sash. The kerf is preloaded with sealant, then with the plexiglass in place, the sash boards are fastened together with pocket screws, and the perimeter of the window gets one more round of sealant for good measure. The finished window is set into place against the weather stripped window stops and held in place with storm door hardware. Now when we talk about air control, we also need to talk about air quality control. And a lot of times in a basement, that means dealing with radon gas coming up through the slab. What you can get is one of these little test kits from your local home center. You leave it in the first occupied level of your house, so in this house it would be the main floor. And then you send it away and they'll send back the test results and let you know what your radon gas level is. 
If it's elevated, you'll need to do something to address it. That's it for the doors and windows. Next up, we'll get to work on the final step, insulation. 